Imagine stepping outside on the coldest day you've ever known, the kind of cold that bites straight through your jacket, where your breath freezes the moment it leaves your lips. Now, take that chill and multiply it by five. At minus 84 degrees, Fahrenheit the Arctic doesn't just feel cold. It feels like the air itself is out to steal every bit of warmth from your body. Metal snaps like glass. Bare skin freezes solid in seconds. Your home freezer, that would feel like a summer breeze in comparison. Most folks wouldn't last five minutes out there, but for the Inuit, this is home. And they've not only survived it, they've mastered it with knowledge passed down through generations, turning the deadliest cold on earth into a place where life still thrives. So how do you build a life in a place where the cold can kill you faster than hunger? The answer isn't found in fancy technology or thick concrete walls. It's found in snow. To most of us, snow is just something you shovel off the driveway or pack into a snowman. But for the Inuit, snow became the foundation of one of the most ingenious shelters ever created by human hands, the igloo. Simple at first glance, yet brilliant in design, this dome of snow has kept families warm, safe, and alive for thousands of years. Let's step inside and see why. When you first lay eyes on an igloo, it doesn't look like much. Just a dome of snow sitting quietly in the middle of a frozen desert. But don't let the simplicity fool you. That dome, it's not just a shelter. It's a perfectly tuned heating system, a fortress against the wind, and a symbol of human ingenuity at its finest. Think about it this way. While most houses need bricks, wood, or steel, the Inuit built a home out of nothing but snow. Snow, the very thing that chills us to the bone, becomes in their hands a blanket of warmth. It's like turning lemons into lemonade. Except here, you're turning snowflakes into survival. The genius of the igloo lies in its shape. Each block of snow is carefully cut and stacked in a spiral leaning ever so slightly inward. This spiral forms what engineers today call a catenary curve. It's the same principle behind stone arches in cathedrals or modern bridges, a design that distributes weight evenly, making the whole structure incredibly strong. That's why an igloo can stand tall against howling arctic winds, heavy snowfalls, and even a curious polar bear that decides to climb on top. It's not just pretty geometry, it's survival mathematics carved in snow. Now here's the part that might surprise you. You can't build an igloo with just any snow. That fluffy powder you see drifting down on Christmas morning, too soft. The rock-hard ice crust you scrape off your windshield, too brittle. What the Inuit look for is something called sintered snow. Snow that's been packed tight by the wind, its crystals bonded together at the molecular level. So compact you can barely push your finger into it. To find it, they use what's known as the stick test. Hunters walk around poking the snow with a wooden staff. If the stick slides in too easy, the snow's too soft. If it won't go in at all, the snow's too hard. They're searching for that Goldilocks zone just right. And when they strike it, they've hit white gold. Under the right conditions, blocks cut from this snow can actually be stronger than concrete of the same thickness. Imagine that walls made of snow holding up better than the walls of some buildings. To carve this miracle material, you don't need a whole toolbox. Just a few essentials passed down through generations. The star of the show is the panna, the traditional snow knife. Long, wide, sharp, more like a snow sword than a knife. With it, Inuit builders cut and shape each block precisely. Some today use carpenter's saws, but the principle remains the same. You'll also need a shovel to clear the site, a measuring stick, or sometimes just your own forearm and snow goggles with narrow slits carved from wood or antler. Not for style, but for survival, because snow glare is like staring into a giant frozen disco ball. Here's where the real magic begins. First, the ground is cleared down to hard-packed snow. Then a circle is marked out. 
One builder stands at the center holding one end of a rope, while another walks around with the other end tracing a perfect circle in the snow, like drawing with a compass, but on nature's white canvas. The blocks are cut about two feet long, one foot high, and eight inches thick. Not random numbers. They're measured to be light enough to lift, but strong enough to hold. The very first block is the cornerstone. It's cut at a slight angle leaning inward about 15 degrees. Miss that angle and the whole igloo could collapse. Get it right and you've laid the foundation for a dome that will hold strong. As the wall rises, each block is set a little smaller, a little lighter, leaning inward just a touch more than the one below. Like playing Jenga in reverse, but with snow. Bit by bit, a spiral climbs upward, and soon that open circle of blocks transforms into a graceful dome. The mathematics is astonishing. Each block carries just enough weight to compress slightly stronger without breaking tighter, without gaps. Finally comes the king block, the last piece at the very top. Cut slightly larger than the opening shaped like a wedge. Slide it into place, twist it just so, and suddenly the entire structure locks together. It's like the keystone in a stone arch, the single block that turns a pile of snow into a self-supporting home. But the igloo isn't just about walls and roofs. It's full of clever design features. The entrance is dug lower than the main floor, a cold trap where heavy cold air sinks keeping the living space above warmer. A small vent hole at the top allows fresh air in and smoke out. Without it, the air would grow stale and dangerous. But with it, the igloo breathes safe and steady. Even more fascinating as the inside warms from body heat, a thin layer of the inner wall melts and then refreezes. This creates a hard ice shell that makes the structure even stronger. In other words, the longer you live in an igloo, the tougher it becomes. For the Inuit igloos were more than a roof overhead. On hunting trips, they could throw one together in just a couple of hours, faster than most of us can figure out a modern tent. They served as rest stops, as command centers for long hunts, and as natural refrigerators for storing meat. Inside an igloo, temperatures stay just below freezing perfect for preserving food and far safer than leaving it exposed to prowling polar bears. Sometimes entire clusters of igloos were built together, sleeping quarters in one storage in another, a little snowy village in the middle of nowhere. Think of it as the Arctic version of a hunting lodge. From the outside, an igloo might seem like just a pile of snow. But step inside and you realize it's a masterpiece of engineering, a structure that turns the harshest cold into a livable home. Strong enough to bear weight, like concrete, smart enough to heat itself and reinforce its own walls, and simple enough to build with nothing but snow and a knife. It's proof that sometimes the oldest solutions are still the best. And it's a reminder of what humans can achieve when survival is on the line. Step inside an igloo and the first thing you notice isn't the walls of snow, it's the warmth. Now don't get me wrong, you won't be sitting there in a t-shirt sipping lemonade. But when the world outside is minus 40 and the inside holds steady at 32 even climbing to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, that feels warm as toast. And here's the kicker. There's no fireplace, no furnace, no electric heater humming in the corner. The only heat source is you, your own body, and the bodies of the people beside you. See, the igloo works like a natural thermos. Its dome shape traps rising warm air, circulating it through the small enclosed space, instead of letting it drift away. Hot air rises, cold air sinks, and the clever design makes sure the warm stays where you need it most. But here's the part that still amazes engineers today. As the air inside warms up, the inner surface of the snow begins to melt just slightly. Then when the temperature drops again, it refreezes. This creates a thin layer of ice, and that ice doesn't weaken the igloo. It makes it stronger sealing the gaps, locking the blocks tighter. So the longer you live inside an igloo, the sturdier and warmer it becomes. 
a house that heals itself built out of snow. Talk about turning the coldest place on earth into home sweet home. When you live where the air can freeze your skin in seconds, clothing isn't fashion, it's survival. The Inuit figured this out long before high-tech jackets and synthetic fabrics. They're secret layers made from the very animals they lived alongside. The first layer is reindeer or caribou skin worn with the fur facing inward. Why? Because each hair is hollow, trapping tiny pockets of warm air. It pulls moisture off the body, keeping you dry even when you sweat. And up here, staying dry can mean staying alive. Over that comes seal skin with the fur facing outward. Seal skin is naturally windproof and waterproof. Its oils repel moisture, so snow and sleet just slide right off. Think of it as nature's raincoat, tough enough for an arctic storm. But here's the real genius. Inuit clothing works like a thermostat. Too warm, loosen a tie, let some air out. Too cold, tighten it up, seal the warmth in. It's like carrying a built-in climate control system on your back. This wasn't just clothing. It was a second skin light, breathable and perfectly tuned for the harshest climate on Earth. Long before Gore-Tex and down jackets, the Inuit had already mastered the art of bundling up. And in the Arctic, that knowledge was worth more than gold. In the Arctic night isn't just cold, it's brutal. If you want to wake up in the morning, you need more than a blanket. You need a system. The Inuit perfected theirs long before modern sleeping bags. It starts with seal skin on the outside. Naturally waterproof, it keeps every drop of moisture out. Inside caribou, fur lines the bag, each hollow hair trapping warm air like tiny thermos bottles. Together, it creates insulation so effective you can sleep like a log while the wind howls outside. The stitching. That's another stroke of genius. They used sinew fibers from animal tendons. When sinew gets wet, it swells, sealing every seam tighter, like the bag is protecting itself through the night. And they didn't stop there. Before bedtime, stones were heated by the fire, then wrapped in thick furs and tucked near sleeping spots. All night long, the stones released gentle heat. At the same time, the warmth melted a thin layer of the igloo walls, which then refroze into ice, making the shelter even stronger by morning. But maybe the smartest move of all was sleeping together. Families lay side by side on raised platforms high enough to stay in the warmest pocket of air. Children and elders were placed in the very middle, protected on all sides. It was safety in numbers, and body heat shared meant life preserved. In a world of endless winter, this wasn't just sleep. It was survival wrapped in fur and held together by community. In the Arctic, even the simple act of breathing can be dangerous. One deep gulp of freezing air, and it feels like knives cutting straight into your chest. That's the bite of the cold, the kind that chills you to the bone before you even realize it. The Inuit knew this better than anyone, so they learned to breathe differently. Rule number one, always breathe through the nose. Your nose works like a natural furnace. It warms the air, moistens it, and makes sure your lungs don't fill with ice-cold air. Breathe through your mouth out here, and you're just pouring frost straight into your chest. Rule number two, slow, steady breaths. Not quick gasps, not shallow panting deep and calm. This way, you lose less heat with every breath, and your body doesn't burn precious energy trying to recover. It's how you breathe easy in the middle of a storm. And finally, they wrapped fur around their faces. As they exhaled, warm breath condensed into the fur, holding in both warmth and moisture. The next breath they took was already softer, warmer. It's a simple system, but in a place this unforgiving, the way you breathe, can be the difference between life and death. Out here, food isn't just food, it's fuel. In the Arctic, every bite has to keep the body burning like a furnace. That's why the Inuit diet leans heavy on fat. Seal, whale, fish, caribou, all rich in fat, and calories that stick to your ribs. 
Unlike sugar or bread that burn out quick fat burns, slow steady keeping the body warm through endless nights, they even time their meals with survival in mind. A heavy fatty meal before bed acted like throwing a big log on the fire. The body digests through the night releasing heat from the inside out. It's the original version of an all-night heater. And here's the kicker. Much of it was eaten raw or lightly prepared. That kept the nutrients intact omega-3's vitamins energy packed right into every bite. Long before diet books and supplements, the Inuit knew that you are what you eat wasn't just a saying, it was survival. In the Arctic, survival isn't just about the body, it's about the mind. The Inuit understood this. They told stories, shared jokes, even poked fun at the cold itself. Because sometimes laughter really is the best medicine. It kept fear at bay and gave everyone the courage to face another night. They also practiced calm, slow breathing, steady focus. No panic, no wasted energy. It was true, mind over matter. By keeping stress low, they kept warmth in and their bodies strong. And above all, they leaned on each other. Families huddled close, sharing warmth, food, and space. It wasn't every man for himself. It was, we're all in this together. That sense of unity turned frozen nights into something more than survival. It turned them into community. And in the Arctic community was the greatest shelter of all. When you look at the Inuit way of life, it's clear that survival isn't just about gadgets or modern science. It's about ancient knowledge passed down hand to hand. It's about creativity turning snow into shelter fur, into warmth food, into fuel. And above all, it's about community. The igloo is more than a house of snow. It's a symbol of resilience, a reminder that even in the harshest places on earth, human beings can adapt, endure, and thrive. That's the cold, hard truth technology changes, but wisdom and unity stand the test of time. The Inuit proved that survival is not just about beating the cold. It's about embracing it, working with it, and finding strength in one another. In the end, the greatest shelter of all wasn't the igloo itself. It was the human spirit.